So friends, let's start with thermodynamics in this session. What is thermodynamics? Can we know that? Thermodynamics, thermo, and dynamics. Thermo is known as E, and dynamics when it changes or transfer. So thermodynamics basically deals with what? Heat energy and its transfer to various forms. What else? Why do we study thermodynamics? Basically, gives you a direction in which the change would happen for a given process. So, such as gives the direction. Sets the limit. For the process. So, this example would be a reversible reaction. What will be the maximum conversion that can be obtained from the reaction? That will be given by Xc, which is the equilibrium conversion. So, basically, it gives you the conditions for equilibrium. What else? It doesn't take into account rate or the time factor. So how it differentiates itself from kinetics? Kinetics is taking into consideration the date or the time factor. This is devoid of that. So what are thermodynamics basically deals with heat and its transfer into various forms? It sets a limit or gives a direction in which the change would happen that is whether it would be a spontaneous process or not spontaneous based on free energy calculations sets the limit for the process that is what would be the maximum conversion example would be the equilibrium conversion attained in a chemical reversible reaction conditions for equilibrium when the vapor and the liquid for a distillation system would be in equilibrium that conditions will be given by the thermodynamics or governed by the thermodynamics. Only factor how it differs itself from kinetics is the rate. It doesn't take into account the rate or the time. Again, further it can be classified as statistical and classical. But what we would be dealing is the classical part. This is what forms the rate portion. Statistical is more than advanced thermodynamics. Which you play at the molecular level. Right now, we will be working in the atomic. So, let's go further and understand the terms in thermodynamics first and then the detailed part. With respect to majorly, it would be divided as thermodynamic terms, first thing to understand. Then we have first law, second law. Application. Then we have the Carnot's engine, refrigeration, heat pump, cycle. Then what we have is thermodynamic properties or the functions, basic properties, basic. Equations, then detailed study of its energy and its generating function. Then it would be the application of its energy function. So let's first study in thermodynamic terms. As you all know, Thermodynamics deals with what? Deals with system and surrounding. So what is system? System is any part of the universe which is under study. So
system forms the part of the universe which is under study. So if you have a distillation column, streams are coming in, you have your condenser, the crux. So then distillation column would be a system. And surrounding would be anything outside the control volume of the distillation column. So you have system surrounding together would be universe. Boundary separating system and surrounding. The line of demarcation which separates the system and the surrounding is the Okay. And then what you have? Types of system, open, closed and isolated. Open system is those system which extinguishes both matter as well as energy in the surrounding. Closed system exchanges only Isolated neither matter nor energy. So, what would be the examples? Water kept in a flask and is being heated. That would be open system. Water kept in a closed flask and heated. That would be a closed system. Water kept in an insulated flask. That would be a isolated. So this is classification of systems. Then you have thermodynamic properties. So any system which you want to characterize, you need some properties. So, thermodynamics what to consider is pressure, temperature, entropy, volume, etc. So, now this thermodynamic properties again can be classified as intensive and extensive. Intensive properties are those which do not depend on the mass or the size of the system. It is extensive, depend on mass and size of the system. Example would be for intensive density. For extensive volume. Other examples temperature comes under intensive pressure. Heat capacity would be extension. Specific heat capacity would be intention. So the way to classify intention extension would take any property and just see whether its value changes if you change the mass of the system. Volume of 1 kg of water and volume of 10 kg of water. Would it be same? No. It would be. So is a extensive problem. What about density? Density is mass per unit volume. Now you would say it depends on mass. But density of 1 kg of water and 100 kg of water would remain the same. That is mass per unit volume. Then temperature. In temperature for a bowl which is exposed to the surrounding whether it is a smaller about a big about temperature would remain the same. What about pressure? Now pressure is a little bit tricky. To increase the moles, what would happen? We are increased N, let's assume an ideal gas PV is equal to NRT. We are increasing the moles of gas present. What would happen to the volume? Volume would also increase. You know one mole of gas at NTP occupies 22.4 liters. If we increase the moles at the same temperature, pressure conditions, volume is bound to increase. 
So then the ratio would be same or different because if you increase n twice, volume would also increase by twice. So overall increase has been nullified and pressure remains constant. So pressure also is an intensive property. So in this way you need to classify. Basically you need to take C and whether the property value changes if you change the mass of the system. Volume of 1 kg, volume of 10 kg. Is it the same? No. Density of 1 kg and 10 kg, it's the same. Don't see at the units. At the units you see mass is there. So mass changes, density changes. It's not so similar case happens with chemical rate constant. Rate constant is just a function of temperature. It doesn't change with concentration. But for the units, concentration does come. Rate constant unit for a second order reaction is concentration inverse time units. So you have concentration, does that mean it's a function of concentration? No. Similarly over here. See whether the value changes if you change the amount or the size of the system. Then having understood thermodynamic properties, there are thermodynamic functions. First thing to understand is the equation of scale. In the thermodynamic scale. The unit is given by this properties itself. As shown, volume and temperature would give you the thermodynamic scale. So it's function of pressure, volume and temperature will be equal to shape. This gives you basically the equation of state. Now what does this tell you? From P, V and T, to select two of them, the value of the third gets fixed. So only two of them are independent. So this is one type of way to represent P, V, T equal to zero. There are different equations, just like you have seen ideal gas equation, which we apply for ideal gas. For real gases, you have Andermol's equation of state, you have Ken Robinson, then you have RPSO. Again, depending on what are the types of gases, maybe the hydrocarbon is involved, or other non combustible gases, maybe. So, again, classification is then based on the properties of the real gases. They are Electrovalent or electrolytic in nature, non electrolytic in nature. Different equations of state have been used. But in normal calculations, we assume real gases to follow the ideal gas law. Again, that is valid when you have the operating conditions of high temperature and low pressure. Deviation from the ideal gas of the real gas increases. As you go towards high pressure and low temperature. But other equations of state, RTSO, Ken Robinson, Michael Watts, this is what is entered in your process simulators database. So when you try to evaluate the properties in an aspen flow state or a process, any process simulator, it makes use of the other equations of state doesn't approximate with the ideal gas. Approximating with ideal gas gives you some error, but then that is taken account into your safety factor which you use for your design calculations. So, thermodynamic state is clear, it's basically nothing but relation between PVT for the system. Different equations of state, then moving further you have thermodynamic state function. So any property, if it depends only on the initial and the final state of the system, then that would be your state function. So, then what's the difference between state and path? So if you say you move from state 1 to state 2, and that can be done through path A, through path B. Now, if you are evaluating a 
compose the change in free energy for this system from path state 1 to state 2 what is delta G now delta G for path B and delta G for path A if it's the same then what does it signify irrespective of the path followed to move from state 1 to state 2 the delta G has not changed so the property value or change in property is the same irrespective of the path then that becomes your state function whereas for the path function the delta of the property or the change in the property to move from state 1 to state 2 if it changes the change in the path followed then it becomes your path function so entropy free energy gives free energy that we become as the state function whereas path function the work done would be different to go from state 1 to state 2 from path A side and that from path B side so then this works what forms the basis of the thermodynamic terms this is what we would be using in further discussions of the topics system surrounding universe bound B the types of system open, closed and isolated thermodynamic properties intensive and extensive how they are classified what is thermodynamic state thermodynamic state function path function how are this classified again from the date point of view you may have master columns or two or false based on this the common terms of the definitions so understanding is required for that again open closed this would be basically used in the sums whenever you have a numerical given to you which equation to apply would depend on the type of system so first you need to identify what's the type of system whether it's open or closed so that's all with the initial start of the thermodynamic terms with the basics required the definitions now let's go for the laws of thermodynamics its application and then move further into the topics